Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome to the Purple People Podcast. Football is back. Yeah. Is- Ooh. I'm here with preseason, but it counts. Yes. Uh, I heard a really dirty joke earlier about preseason football. I'm not going to say it, though. So, <laughs> welcome to the Purple People Podcast. Um, let me scroll up here. This is episode number 264, Rodney Adams Family. Pretty cool. Uh, I, I don't know. I liked that show a lot growing up. And we're, I was being really lazy. I was gonna actually, Adam. What do you think about this, Kyle? Uh, by the way, my two glorious. Uh, no. I'm not even gonna say co-hosts because you guys are the I, brains of this operation. I just no. I got lucky and fell here. I'm like that stray dog that you guys fed. Now I won't leave. So, <laughs> hey, you guys, you guys got this all ready this week. I was busy over on the Viking Age getting out my game review and some of the big moments from the game. And uh, there was actually a couple touchdowns, which is pretty nice. And so, Quite a few sacks going around, so I got to get out quite a bit of really good Viking action over on the Viking Age, so check that out if you haven't already. Uh, We wanted to be here for you as soon as possible after the game was over to talk Vikings football, and I hope that you guys appreciate that and can join us here in the chat or listen to us as soon as the show is up. Uh, Rodney Adams Family, of course, as you said, the Adams Family. Uh, That's another show that I used to watch. It used to be on in the mornings on weekends. Because during the weekdays when I'd wake up for school, it would be Gilligan's Island. And then on the weekends, if I'd wake up at the same time, it was the Adams Family, which was pretty awesome. I remember seeing the Adams Family, I believe it was on Nick, at Nick at Night, when they would play I Love Lucy and anything old school like that. I remember that's, uh, I don't know if it's then, but I don't know if it was the same channel, but I know it was at the same time frame late at night. And I just, I thought it was really cool how you could put something kind of, Halloween and scaryish and add comedy in there. That was one of the coolest things I'd ever seen. But I was either that or I was going to go with like Buffalo Bill Murray because who doesn't love Bill Murray? And we played the Bills this week. But I, I think given the fact that Rodney Adams got a touchdown this week, we're going to talk about that. I can't hear Buffalo Bill without thinking of Silence of the Lambs. Yeah, that too. And I didn't want it to get confused with that weirdo. So, <laughs> <laughs> but someone else that loves horror and the, and the Minnesota Vikings is Kyle West who's here joining me, who is Adam Carlson, I don't know if we said that already, and Kyle Smith, who gave you the intro. Uh, We are here to talk about the Vikings preseason game week one in Buffalo against the Bills. Should I I had a fun time watching the game. How about you guys? Well, I was mad at first because I have an amazing Amazon Fire Stick, but I need to update Cody or something else. If anyone on the show or you guys know of a different way to watch games, uh, I had to keep updating Cody, and I didn't get to watch the game there, so I got on my laptop. Uh, I missed the first uh, drive, but I got to see everything else up to the second half. But I enjoyed it. Uh, it was just cool to see everybody getting out there and getting around. I saw I was on Instagram before, and uh, Eric Kendricks actually dropped the F-bomb, and he's like, hashtag <laughs> He's like, I'm ready. I'm so ready to play football. And I was like, man, this is exciting. It's finally here. It was kind of shocking. Now, living in St. Paul, I finally got to watch the Vikings pregame show. I got to hear the commentary with Paul Allen, even though he got a couple names wrong and stuff like that. He's still a good announcer that knows his stuff when it comes to his hometown team, which is nice. It's it's good to have that kind of broadcast rather than it's usually the home team, I believe. So this would have been Buffalo. I I believe that's who it's going to be when it comes to the NFL Network replay, which I think is at 3 a.m. Central time. The Vikings get the 3 a.m. slot because, you know, so many people want to watch Minnesota and Buffalo. 3 (laughs) a.m. No, it's exciting. I mean, you don't win the Super Bowl in week one of the preseason. Like, There's a lot of people getting all worked up over stuff that happened. It's like, just calm down a bit here, folks. Just calm down and out to the preseason week one. Uh, With that said, though, I mean, come on. It's super exciting because this is the the first step towards – Uh, real, tangible football. And we get to see a little bit of a glimpse of some of our rookies that we're going to get to talk about later. And we get to see, start to form opinions on the team based on, like, our firsthand uh, account of watching, you know, what goes on and not just simply relying on, you know, what we've read and what's been reported online. Like, we can base our opinion on actual games now, and I am excited to talk about it. Now, there were some players that weren't in that game. Latavius Murray wasn't part of the game. Riley Rafe didn't play. Jarek McKinnon wasn't there. I'm not sure about Rashad Hill. I didn't see him. So I don't believe he was in on that for, on that first team offense. Uh, we also had uh, several interesting situations. 
as far as players who may or may not have played, especially since um, I didn't get to see Mobo either. Did you guys see Mobo? Uh, he was out there on special teams. Uh, he was on the special teams unit. They had him running down, I think, kick returns, maybe punt returns as okay. well, too. Um, so, yeah, he was out there a little bit on special teams. Um, I think he may have lined up once or twice. I think I've seen him uh, at receiver, but he had no – nothing was thrown his way, no targets, no catches. But uh, working him in a little bit out there, we'll see. I expect by the time we get to maybe that fourth preseason game – uh, maybe you'll see maybe a bit more of him. Because I know he's got a lot of international appeal, and people are really interested to see him do his thing. Adam, I got his jersey on right now for you, bud. I know, I, I know. To, That's why I, I had to bring I, him up. I, I had to wear it. <laughs> Let me jump in and do the divider real quick. Before we jump into this game review, uh, we don't really have a lot of quick hits because we just did a show a couple days ago, but we wanted to push this out to you. Like Adam said, as soon as the game is over with, I think the game's been over for maybe a little bit of an hour. So we want to get this out for you as soon as we could. Uh, Adam mentioned it already. Latavius Murray was unable to participate in the preseason opener. There were a handful of guys that weren't there. Uh, he mentioned mo most of them as well. If it's on the Vikings website. I know it's on their Instagram. And I'll tell you the guys that just didn't play, uh, like Latavius Murray and uh, Jarek McKinnon, to name a few. But I, I wanted to talk about something interesting real quick before we break this uh, game down at the Bills. Um one of the more popular guys out there for sports casting, uh, broadcaster, Colin Cowherd, did his uh, NFC and AFC playoff picture preseason predictions this week. And uh, the reason I'm talking about that is because the Vikings were mentioned in there. Now, people aren't going to like the seeding or the, necessarily the wins and losses, but I'll give you the rundown. He has the Packers at 12 and 4 as the number one seed, three 10 and 6 teams in a row. So, number two would be the Seattle Seahawks. Three would be the Carolina Panthers. Four would be the Philadelphia Eagles. Actually, make that four 10 and 6 teams. So the NFC is going to be kind of weird. The Dallas Cowboys at number five, and he has us at number six. So we would get a wild card spot into the playoffs at nine and seven. Now, this would be an upgrade from last year's record. As we all know, we started out five and oh, and then we had a very bad skid and we finished eight and eight. So uh, <laughs> an improvement from last year is is always good. I was hoping that it would be in the double digit wins. That's what I'm hoping for this team. But if we make the postseason, I don't think many people are going to care as long as we can make it there. Now, so, Mr. Coward here, I'm going to say uh, the Panthers out, Falcons in. Yes. Uh, Eagles out, Giants in. Otherwise, I can't complain too much. Yeah, he's very, I, I don't, very, very I don't high on it. All the 10 and 6. Uh, to me, 10 and 6 is the ultimate prediction of, well, I think this team's going to be good, but I don't really know what. So 10 and 6 <laughs> on the season. 10 and 6 for you, and 10 and 6 for you. And <laughs> Everybody gets a 10 and everyone 6. Everyone gets a 10 and 6. That's the average that we're going for. Here's uh, the thing that is interesting for me. Okay. This is why, because I listen to every single one, because he breaks it down by division as well, and he just crapped all over the Chicago Bears and said they were the worst team in football. Oh, they're going to be bad. They're going to be really, really bad. Terrible. I, I don't think that that's just us picking on them. I think that's a an aspect. No, they're, they're legitimately But they always terrible. play well against Minnesota once a year, so it's yeah, going to be a challenge at least once. Well, speaking of, if yeah. you guys didn't know, I know this is a Vikings podcast, but the funniest thing in the world, uh, not Mitch Trubisky, Mike Glennon is a starter in uh, Chicago, and I believe on the first drive he threw a pick first six. First play. It was first the first play. play. So, I think. <laughs> good luck, Chicago. I'm sorry to the Bears fans. But here's what he said, and we can run back because I don't want to talk about this game that just happened. He said that Aaron Rodgers, hands down, is the best quarterback in that division. We all agree on that. We're not going to – Sure. It. Um, he said that he thought the Vikings had the best personnel of the division and arguably the best coach. But I find that funny because we could have the best players and probably the best coach – but it all comes under the quarterback position, really, if you want to get sold on it. Um, I think Matt Stafford is trending up. They did win a lot of close games last year. We already talked about the Bears. It's been this way for, what, five out of the last six seasons? This is the Packers' division to lose. So I don't like seeing them at 12-4. and four. We'll see. I think the most interesting thing about all that was all these 10 and 6 teams are going to change. And I'm with Adam on this. The Atlanta Falcons were a juggernaut on offense last year. I do not see the Panthers going Powerful out. defense, too. And uh, my prediction, my surprise prediction, I told you guys this in other shows, 
Um, I think the Bucks could actually slide in as a wild card because Jameis Winston and that team, I think they were 9-7 last year. They were close. The Eagles are not going to go 10-6, and six, not in that division. There's no way. I don't, I don't buy that one second. I can no, I'm it. not there on that either. I think the Giants are going to be way better than he thinks. Uh, Colin Coward, though, is always big on quarterbacks. He uses the Vegas method for – Yes. Talking about how he thinks teams are good. Oh, quarterbacks are worth a, a touchdown in, at Vegas, you know. And, yeah, a great quarterback can get you really far, but it's it's a team game, man. And uh, Sam Bradford with a strong defense, I'll take that over a better quarterback with an awful defense. I'll, that's just the way I look at it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm well sorry. Said, I'm very well said. I have a little bit of homerism there, but I, I'm with you. I think a, a well-balanced team can do great things. I mean, we look at Peyton Manning a couple years ago. He was terrible, best defense in the league, and it got him the ring. So, But I wanted to throw that out there. Uh, if you guys that are – thank you to everyone in the chat, by the way, for showing up. I know it's kind of late, but – Yeah, we got Wartig here. We got Eric Grendahl hanging out with us. Dorian Foley's here. Uh, yeah. Jason Tavade. We are jam-packed with folks here. Uh, and they want several of our opinions, but we're going to get to that as soon as we start talking about – what happened in the preseason game? Well, let's, let's get rolling. Let's, let's go to that Viking game. We'll talk yeah. about the game right now. I just want to get that out there because it had something to do with the Vikings. It was national. So I want to. I always want to get that when we have some sort of positive attention. But if you didn't already hear, if you hadn't seen, uh, we won 17-10 to 10 in Buffalo, the first game of the preseason. Um, the first team offense and defense was pretty ugly. Uh, but some of the guys that you wanted to look at that are fighting for a roster spot, they really came out and played. Uh, I think there's just some fan favorites that are going to shine during the preseason, like Rodney Adams, who's uh, you know mentioned in the title of this show. But we'll take a win. I think it was positive. But I, I think the funniest thing for me from this game was Mike Zimmer at the half. And uh, <laughs> no, I love that. I'll let you guys take I love- it over. I'm, I'm, I don't want to give just my opinion on this game, but we won 17 to 10. Um, but yeah, you guys can take that quote over if you want because it's really really funny. What was it? I, I want to uh, get it right. Um, Mike Zimmer was asked if how what he thought the Vikings did well in the first half, and his response was not much. And he kind of looked like he was going to laugh for a second, and then uh, then that serious look took over, and and yeah, you knew he, that he, he was said, on uh, top of it. He said there wasn't really much I liked. <laughs> Can't Which blame him. Like I said earlier, I didn't get to watch it from my, my fire stick on my television, so I had to get on these third-party sites and watch it online. But um, what I did see, uh, Dalvin Cook is a good pass catcher. He's going to come into his own as a runner. I didn't expect him to blow it out of the water there because, but let's be, face it, Buffalo's got a great defense. You know, everybody's overshadowed in the AFC East because of the uh, Patriots, and they're still going to win this year. They're probably going to go to the Super Bowl again. But they have a great defense, and uh, – he didn't get a lot done running, but he did catch the ball, and he did uh, show his speed and elusiveness there. Uh, Bradford checked down a lot because he was getting rushed a lot, so not a lot of uh, not a lot of flashy plays on the offense. The defense, too, man, that, that and we're going to talk about that when we go to game ball and donkey. The, the defense was kind of shaky. Uh, Adam Carlson pointed it out in his uh, uh, article that he mentioned. Some plays, this team looked great. Other plays, maybe the next play later. Not so much. It was kind of up and down. But I attribute this game just to rustiness and getting out on the field for the first time. I don't think this is a prediction of things to come. Uh, we got a new face in the chat. I'd like to welcome Derevis, I believe it is, who is a first-timer to our chat. And it's always good to have the first-timers. Thanks for stopping by and saying hello. Uh, but before we go into the game, breaking down the game, let's give away our Game Ball and Donkey Awards. Let's start out with the Game Balls. Uh, Mr. Smith, go ahead. I gave my game ball to Case Keenum for not turning the ball over, and he had a pretty sweet uh, run for a first down. He actually was about to get swallowed up from the upper half from two defenders from Buffalo, and he ducked straight down and ran and got a first down. Um, As much as these two guys, and I'm not going against your opinions on it because you were there, I said he wasn't too impressive in, uh, in camp. I'm not saying that he was like Aaron Rodgers tonight. But you could see him going. He took shots down the field when I watched him, and he looked like he was out there to fight, saying, hey, I want this number two job, which Paul Allen said during the uh, – Yeah, he widened the gap there. He did. He did. So I was very happy with Case Keenum's performance tonight. Uh, obviously, he could have played better. I wish he would have thrown a touchdown. because uh, He had a couple uncatchable throws, but to be honest, uh, most of those were probably thrown away rather than attempts at completions. Right. 
most importantly, he looked like a solid, capable backup. Yes, he right. did. I, that is what the Vikings are looking for. I was really quite impressed with Case. Well, Keenum. Taylor Heineke made a couple mistakes that a person that's been in the league as long as he has shouldn't. He, he hurt his stock. We'll get to Taylor here in a little bit. Uh, so my game ball, I am going to give to Tashawn Bauer. Ooh, I almost picked him too, Adam. But- Tashawn Bauer, two, two tackles, one big sack. Uh, he defended a pass as well, hit the quarterback twice, uh, undrafted free agent this year, rookie, came out, and he is making a case for himself to either grab a hold of a practice squad spot or maybe even a spot on the 53 if he keeps playing the way he is. He's he's really impressing me, and I, I'm really excited to see what this young man can do going forward. Yeah, this was a coming out party for Tashawn Bauer. I don't think a lot of fans had really paid much attention to, myself included. Uh, mm. Yeah, I, I don't think we I don't think we really talked about him much at all prior to this. Uh, but he came out and he made a nice, nice uh, little splash for himself. I, I like that. That's the point of preseason. At this point, I've had a lot of pl- a lot of fans had never even heard that name before. No, uh, I probably not. Bet on that. Yep. What about you, Kyle? Uh, I went with wide receiver Stacy Cooley, uh, who was one that uh, I had felt was going to be in competition with Rodney Adams uh, all throughout preseason for who's one or the other is going to make the roster here. And I have been pulling for Rodney Adams. Uh, he was the one that I thought was going to be more explosive. But actually, in this game, I think Stacy Cooley did a better overall job than Rodney Adams. Uh, uh, Rodney I, Adams did have the one touchdown. He, he did have the but one Stacey touchdown. But Stacey Coley had a couple really nice catches, and I actually think that Rodney Adams hurt himself for when it comes to special teams today. Yep. Special teams special teams is how either of these two is going to make the roster. And, uh, you know, with Rodney, you know, kind of miffing on was it was a punt, correct, Adam? Yeah, yeah, bounced yeah, right he, off him. He, yeah, he didn't uh, secure that punt, and so I think that really... And there was a couple of spots where he should have taken a fair catch or maybe even stepped away from the ball, and he didn't. Yeah, exactly. And I thought that, that uh, Stacey Cooley overall was the better, more well-rounded wide receiver, but I did like Rodney on that little end-around uh, little gadget play, which I know Paul Allen had mentioned that he had run kind of those in college, so that's more what he's familiar with, but... Uh, I will it's admit, a, I've been sleeping on Stacy Coley. I, I didn't see him having this kind of a week one preseason. And, and if he can keep that up, he's going to make a case for that main roster. Me too. This is exciting. we got three more preseason games. Watch these two wide receivers because there's only one open roster spot, two guys vying for it with a lot of potential. And that, that's what's exciting to watch unfold. Um, so we hit on quarterbacks a little bit. Uh, Taylor Heineke, stock down, not to uh, – not too impressive today. Case Keenum, I think stock is up. Well, Taylor Heineke was also Kyle West's donkey of the week. Yeah. He was my donkey. He was, uh, you're right, Case Keenum was stock ticking upward. Taylor Heineke was stock ticking downward. I know that he was injured and he hasn't played in a while. I'm going to chalk it up to him being rusty. But for a guy like you said, Adam, who's been around the league for a little bit. He's been with the Vikings for a little bit now. Uh, I was expecting more from him, and he looked frankly terrible uh he threw a bad interception and then there were a few times afterward where he should have thrown it away he knows better he didn't do it he held on he got the sack uh i wasn't liking his decision making i i I don't i didn't like what i seen from taylor heineke i didn't think it was that bad but it was definitely disappointing considering a lot of the hype that i've kind of bought into about heineke I expected yeah. better. I really did. You no, know, he's a guy that we had talked previously about being the number two quarterback, and for the Vikings, not happen to have a three on the roster. And you know, if you believe in someone that much, uh, and then to see them come out and have a bad performance, I don't know. It, it's not really what you want to see from Taylor. But I, I did like what I seen from Case Keenum, and I do think that Taylor is worth keeping around as a third. And I am going to chalk it up to it just being him rusty, and he hasn't played in a game in you know a, a little bit now. So we'll see what he can do in week two. Now I'm going to come out, and I'm going to come right out and say uh, my donkey of the week is someone who probably doesn't deserve the donkey of the week. And I know that's a bad way to introduce him. But when you throw a ton of money down at a guy to play right tackle 
and he gets blown by by a rookie, not even like a, a high name rookie. It, it's a bad sign. Uh, Mike Remmer has struggled with his balance, shifting his weight, uh, pass protection. Uh, and, but there were times too when Remmer's looked really good, and he could take players on one on one and even push them back away from the pocket. Uh, it's that kind of inconsistent play that I was talking about in my article over on the Viking Age. Is that Mike Remmers is a good player, and he's a very good player at times. I just wish he was a very good player all the time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Solid point. You know, I had a quick point that I wanted to make. Uh, I was listening to, I believe it was Fran Tarkenton, talk about how long training camp used to be, where you know they would six weeks worth of training camp back in the old days. Now it's down to what, two? And we're playing preseason games. And you yeah. d- you can't really do two a days, so uh, and practices don't can't be padded. They got to be walkthroughs. So what I'm getting at here is that we should not read too much into the first team Vikings offense and defense didn't look on par to where it should be. No, they didn't because, because they are not getting the practice that you know you would used to have with these players. Uh, so that's why it, it maybe in a weird way. It's a little bit of a positive, not a positive, but kind of a good thing that they can get this on film and Mike Zimmer and the rest of the coaches can come out and be like, look, this is what we need to correct, fix it for week two, and let's move on. Absolutely, and they're really going to need to fix it for for week two because that's Seattle. Seattle Seahawks, you betcha. So my donkey of the week, and I, you guys had great points. I'm not going to jump on them, those because it's – how I feel, and I think you get straight to the point. Um, there were, like Adam was saying, there's ups and downs from a lot of people, but I was very, very unimpressed by the the run defense from the first team. Uh, I just talked about it two days ago uh, when we did our podcast for the other day before we do this game review. I said, look, if there's a foundation, because we're talking about run stuff, because we talked about Lynn Bell Joseph the other day, and I'm not picking one person because I didn't get to see the whole game, and I don't know if that's fair, but – I think the first thing that we talk about, and Mike Zimmer's hit on the head like 10, 12 times in interviews uh, and pressers after games, is you got to stop the run. And I understand that they have some good runners in Buffalo, but ain't it, that good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. If, I don't know how many plays LaShawn McCoy played, but it was not him going out there. And hit, these guys were breaking off, you know, 10, 11, 12 yard runs multiple times, and. It was very disappointing. I think that's probably our, our strong suit of the defense. Yeah, so, Buffalo picked up 127 yards on the ground, averaging 5.3 yards per carry. You are not going to make Mike Zimmer happy with that. I think that's going to be one of the very first, if not the and, top thing on the list that he talks about. And Jonathan Williams averaged 9.8 yards per carry. What the hell is Jonathan Williams? Exactly. Exactly. I mean, it was kind of weird, too, because I did see uh, a former Carolina Panther over there now. There were a couple of former Vikings uh, players and coaches there, too. Joe Banyard. Uh, Joe Banyard was over there. He sure was. Uh, Leslie Frazier on the sideline. Um, Vlad Dicasso was in there. I don't know if you guys saw him. I didn't know Vlad was still in the league. He yeah, is. He I did. Was, and I laughed. So I, knew, I was taking a sip of my Mountain Dew, and I about spit it out. I was like, Jesus, he's still playing? But uh, they have Mike Tolbert, who used to be with the Panthers, and uh, – He's always been a bowling ball, that guy. And he was making some damn good plays, too, and running our guys over. And I was like, man, this has got to be a wake-up call. But that's just me personally. Um, the first-team offense didn't look too impressive either. Uh, but the thing that was the worst about this whole thing, if I could chalk it up to one thing about the donkey of the week, were the penalties. Oh, we had some penalties, too, that were stupid. I, I know Mike Zimmer is going to talk about that. But uh, all in all, like you guys said, I don't think it's anything to worry about. Uh, Kyle, you made a very good point about not doing so many practices and uh, mm-hmm. how it used to be. You can't do two a days. It's shorter now. It has to do with player safety, so they can't they have to do walkthroughs and all, like you said. But uh, I almost, it's at the point where I almost expect them to be a little rusty in the first and second preseason game yeah. because they, they've got so little time to practice and prepare. Right. If you're going to read into a preseason game, read into that third one. Right. Yes. Yep. Yep. That's the one to kind of keep a close eye on. Right now, they're just trying to figure things out, uh, evaluate players, kind of mesh a little bit. Uh, it, this They aren't going to show any of the playbook or anything like that. So uh, it, it's not a real time to put a lot of concern down, but it's performances, evaluations, players fighting for their spots, 
uh, trying to round out rosters. That's that's what we're talking about pretty much right now. This is like the base playbook in Madden, uh, where you're not running hardly anything special, but you want to see a player like Deshaun Bauer come out there and make plays in your base playbook, and that's what we're looking for. And I think that's what fans should really try to take away from this one. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. All right, so, of course, as we've said earlier, the Minnesota Vikings beat the Buffalo Bills in Buffalo 17-10. to 10. Uh, Two touchdowns. One came on a two-yard C.J. Ham touchdown run. Got to love that boy from Minnesota. You bet. Uh, the other touchdown came on a two-yard touchdown strike to Rodney Adams from Taylor Heineke. What are they saying in the chat, Adam? What's the, the general consensus? Uh, a lot of people are saying not to read too much into this game yeah, because good. it is the first one. Uh, a lot of folks, too, are talking about how they hope that both Adams and Cooley – and uh, now you now you got me saying Cooley – that Adams and Coley both make the roster at the end of the, or by the 53-man 50, roster. Uh, Eric Grendahl was talking about the Vikings utilizing more screens, and I think that's something we are going to see a lot more of with the Vikings passing offense which is pretty awesome. Uh, we do have a question about uh, how did Pat Elfline and Danny Isadora look tonight? Uh, Pat Elfline, I thought, really stood out. He closed the gap a little bit on that center battle, and I do see that going down to the very wire. Uh, both players, of course, are going to make the, the final roster for at center. Uh, it's only a question of which one is going to start and who isn't. As far as Danny Isadora, um, I believe he even got a shout out on the show uh, during the game itself from Paul Allen about how he's been a student of the game and coaches have taken a real liking to him. Uh, I I personally don't have him on the 53 man roster on my projection, but that doesn't mean I'm right. Uh, If nothing, I see him as at least a practice squad guy, uh, maybe even a 53. I'm not putting a lot of stock in Isadora right now, but I do think that he's got some skills that the Vikings are going to want to keep a watch on. Appreciate everyone in the chat. That's really awesome that you guys are interacting with us, man. And I agree with you guys. Uh, thanks to the newcomers that that first time in there, that first that we've seen. Really appreciate you chiming in. But uh, I'm with you guys. I don't think it's anything for concern. Like the guy, like the guy said uh, earlier, week three. I remember last year when Teddy. I think we played at home. We played the Chargers. The Teddy looked awesome, and they. Played, oh. oh, he looked so good. And that's when you really see. All right, cool. This could <laughs> this could be something special. These are when these guys are going to play the the most in the preseason. And uh, I caught the very end of Mike Zimmer's uh, press conference because he was very uh, angry and ornery looking, which is fine. Even after a win, I expect that from him. Oh, but yes. he said, uh, I said, hey, was there anything of concern um, overall tonight? He said, uh, no, because we're talking about, like you guys said earlier, we talked about his quote. We're like, well, what do you think they did well? He's like, not a lot. Uh <laughs> That's why I love Mike Zimmer so much. Not well, a lot. <laughs> what I was tying in with that comment about being concerned, uh, I meant for Trey Waynes. I'm sorry I didn't interject that in there. Uh, he said, do you see him missing significant time? He said, and this came out of Mike Zimmer's mouth, he said, I think it was like a sore shoulder of some sort. So I don't think it's going to be anything that he might miss the game or not might not start the season. So that's a sigh of relief. That's what he heard. I think it was more of a precautionary thing. Uh, yeah, it's, and it's I don't think Trey Weens needs a lot of reps in preseason either. If he, if he has to set out some preseason games, that's all right. It's preseason. If you think that you might think that a player is hurt, especially a starter, get him out. That's why He's Riley Rapes on the sideline. That's why Latavius Murray's on the sideline. Yep. There's no point in taking these players that could use a little bit of extra time to heal up and force them to get on the field and do some play. <clears throat> it's a smart move. Let them rest up and let mm-hmm. these guys be ready for the regular season. But as a fan, it's hard to say that because you want, selfishly, you want to see all the starters out there and you want them to pound everybody silly. That's what you want to see, right? Oh, I know that's I what I want to see. You immediately want to see Dalvin Cook have a 200-yard rushing game with like six touchdowns and be like, yeah, Dalvin Cook, week one preseason record book. But I, you got to be realistic and be like, eh, probably not going to happen. All right, so we talked about the quarterbacks and their kind of play. Uh, the rushing for the Vikings wasn't absolutely great. They averaged 3.1 yards per carry, led by Terrell Newby at 26 yards on 12 carries. Uh, Bishop I, Shanky had 14 yards on four. Double I Cook, like, 13 on five. 
And C.J. Ham carried the ball five t- three times for five yards and, of course, scored the only rushing touchdown for Minnesota. I hate to say it because he got hurt. I don't like Bishop Sankey at all. Not a big I, fan of Bishop Sankey? I, I know. I am not a fan of his at all. I, oh. Well, uh, he did leave the game with a knee injury, did not return. I'm sure there will be more information about him coming out soon, as well as with Trey Waynes. Uh, these are the kind of preseason injuries that you hate to see because you never really get a lot of information until later in the week. But I seriously hope that both these guys recover fully and quickly and are able to come back and play as soon as possible. Now, when they were lining up in that I formation, that was painful to watch them try to run the ball out of that, that I formation with that personnel. That was that was tough to sit through. What did you think when uh, C.J. Ham came in, the fullback, they put him in the backfield, and they bring in four tight ends? I love that. That was Oh, that amazing. was a beefy unit, man. Jesus, that is a jumbo jumbo set. <laughs> <laughs> that was the Even the I, running back got supersized. Yeah, is there any way that we can keep that personnel for regular season? Because Whew. that was amazing. Or maybe they can just like slide Linval Joseph in and use him <laughs> as an extra tonnage out there. Like, Even CJ Ham, he was it, he got stopped around the one yard line and he fought, man. He had three guys I, on I him. Was, I have a big fan of CJ Ham. It's going to be tough to see him probably not make this roster because I don't know if we I have... didn't think the Vikings were going to keep a fullback. I didn't. Yeah, I don't know if they can keep and a they fullback. they might. He's he's a darn good one. They very well might. Uh, wide receiver is up next. We got Stacy Coley leading the way, sixty-seven yards on three catches. Uh, Delvin Cook four catches for thirty yards. Michael Floyd caught two for twenty. Sankey four for fifteen. Rodney Adams, two for 12. Ham caught one for 11. And then we got several other guys who caught one for 10 yards or less. Mm -hmm. Uh, One guy that was targeted once that didn't haul in the catch was Bucky Hodges. I thought we'd see more of a Bucky Hodges kind of show because he is that receiving specialist tight end. I thought we'd see more of him today. I was a little disappointed that we didn't, but I'm sure there will be plenty of other preseason action for him to put his uh, pass-catching talents on display. I had hoped that uh, Michael Floyd was going to have a a little bit of a bigger uh, performance just because of the fact that he's the veteran. He's been around for four years. He should be better than the talent around him. He can't do better than two for two, man. It it should be like back in the old days when we had uh, Jake Reed on the team, when we had Randy Moss and Chris Carter. And so we'd throw Jake Reed out in, you know, preseason game two, and he would just destroy the competition around him because he should. He should. And that's what Michael Floyd should have been doing as well, too. He should have looked, you know, better than the talent around him. Uh, We got some more people in the chat here. We got Playtime joining us. And uh, we've got another newbie here that I, I hesitate to say his name because I don't know if I should on, on our show. What is it? I want to know. What is it? <laughs> his name is Blowing Loads. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I'll for, say for it. But... For science, I need to know what that means. So you guys can, you can tell us the origination of that name in the chat. I but, think it has to do with laundry blowing off the line, like a load of laundry, clothesline. Yeah, yeah exactly. Too much detergent in the washer. That's what I'm That's... thinking. Yeah, I think so, too. Uh, Eric Randall says, Bucky will make some splash plays soon, and I hope you're right. I really do. That's pretty cool tying in a Bucky Hodges uh, reference. So I don't know how it was for you guys because I called a bunch of the Buffalo Wild Wings around here. They weren't playing this game. Um, I had to watch it on my computer. But I the first part, it was the uh, Buffalo announcers, and then I got to hear Paul Allen. And then – They showed a little preview of who was mic'd up, and it was Anthony Harris, which was really cool because I used to be stationed in Virginia. One of the guys in my old band actually knows, I think, his father. So it's a small world, right? But he was running around. He was happy. He's going to make the team. I think he's going to be one of our backup safeties. And he walked by Bucky Hodges. He's like, hey, man, just go out there and have fun. Like, that was pretty cool to see, you know, a veteran going on cheering him on. He's like, just go out there and have fun, man. But Anthony Harris was running around. He was really excited to finally get back Mm -hmm. on the field. But if you guys didn't see that, that was pretty cool. It might be – I don't know if it's going to be on our on the website for uh, Vikings.com, but I, he was mic'd up tonight, so maybe it'll make its way up there this weekend. That's absolutely true. Uh, over on, we got turnovers here. We've got Taylor Heineke and Rodney Adams both fumbling once. Uh, Jack Tocho, Elijah Lee, and Taylor Heineke all recovered a fumble as well. The Vikings ended up losing one, I believe. So. No, I don't think they. I don't think they lost a fumble at all. 
Their, well, their only true. turnover was the interception, right? Correct. Correct. Okay. Uh, then we talk about defense. Eric Wilson led the way with seven total tackles and two passes defended. Uh, ben Gideon was next with six. Do you like Ben Gideon? you like what you're seeing from him? I really do. Yeah. I, I, I did not know much about him coming into training camp, and then I started hearing all the praise, and then I saw him in this game, and he is a guy to keep an eye on. He's going to challenge Edmund Robinson and uh, Emmanuel Lamore for that starting spot, and I, I think it's going to be real interesting to watch. I think, and this is not a bold statement, other people smarter than I have said this before, but uh, Ben Gideon will be a, a solid special teams uh, player for the Vikings in 2017 at the minimum. And then he will be able to contribute, I think, in, in defense and situations as well, too. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's see what else we got here. We got some more sacks to talk about. Tashawn Power had that one that I talked about earlier. Uh, Everson Griffin had a nice one where he really just kind of ran into him and brought him on down to the ground. Uh, rookie <laughs> defensive tackle Jaleel Johnson had a nice sack in there as well. Uh, that was all great plays. Uh, no interceptions, which was kind of disappointing. I wanted to see an interception during this game. Can I talk about that real quick? Because yeah, I, sure. Like I said, I only got to watch the first half. But there were, th I think, three that they could have intercepted. Uh, one, I think, was uh, – who's our 50? Number 50, is it Robinson? It's the linebacker. Yeah, I think 50 is Edmund Robinson. He dropped one. I know uh, Anthony Barr and Eric Kendricks were flying around for the first team defense. There were some some dropped interceptions on our side today. I was bummed about that too, man, because I really think that's going to be – There were some opportunities, I thought. Yeah, Zimmer is probably uh, yelling at them right now about that. Especially when TJ Yates was in there. He made some really ill-advised throws. Yeah, go ahead, former Tar Heel. Woo! <laughs> uh, meanwhile, Nathan Peterman at one time was in the discussion to be a first-round draft pick as a quarterback, and he ended up falling to Buffalo. And he put forth a – I'll, I'll say it was decent performance, but since he threw a touchdown and didn't have an interception, but I felt like he should have had a couple of those throws picked off because he threw behind receivers. He was high at times. He was all over the place. Yeah, it's a Christian Ponder-like performance. Very Ponder-esque. And plus, Nathan Peterman, that's not a quarterback name, man. No. You can tell whether or not a quarterback's going to be good. Jonathan Thunderman, now there's a quarterback. Yeah, exactly. You can tell whether or not they'll be good based on their last name. Peterman, <laughs> right? you'll, you'll never see someone with the last name Peterman as a quarterback in the Hall of Fame. So just <laughs> cut him right Just cut it right now. Uh, Eric Grendel has a question in the chat about, about Anton Exum. Do you feel like he's progressing? Or is he just failing to keep advancing as a player? Hmm. I saw him eat up a tackle and get pretty much plowed over by Mike Tolbert, so that was cool to see him stop him. But Yeah, but that's Mike Tolbert, man. It's hard to bring that guy down. <laughs> he makes a living off plowing through people. I didn't see much. Of, I didn't really look for him as much, uh, to be honest with you. I think he has a lot of the physical talents to succeed, but just needs to bring that to the table. I think he's got the attitude to succeed as well. But I think it's like instincts where he needs to start working a little bit better, uh, being where he needs to be, uh, reacting quicker to the ball. Once he starts getting all that down, or if he does, I think he'll start to challenge for a safety position. But right now, I'm not as high on, on him as others. He reminds me of Marcus That's Sanford. That is exactly what Eric Randall said in the chat. In the chat. I, I'll be honest with you. That's exactly the first person that comes to mind, the style of play, what he looks like out there. Because Marka had art, but uh, I think the word that you said was the best was the instinct. Uh, not quite sharp enough yet, but uh, hopefully he'll get there, man. Uh, we have a quick fact in the chat as well. Eric Wilson is, a, is the bassist for Sublime. So there's a, a nice little nugget of knowledge. The Did not know that. The more you know. Uh, we also got asked if Exum got any time at Nickel. And I believe he did. I think it was only for a couple of plays, but I don't think he got a lot of action while he was there. Uh, we're not going to run down all the Buffalo players for their stats and everything because, let's be honest, this isn't a Buffalo Bills podcast. But what about Gerald Hodges? You want to talk about Gerald Hodges? Joel, let's talk about Vlade Ducasse for 20 minutes. Let's go. <laughs> uh, we did have Joel Powell who intercepted a pass from Taylor Heineke, if you like Joel Powell. Fantasy. Get him on your fantasy now. Yeah, my fantasy preseason team is just on a roll. 
<laughs> fantasy preseason. <laughs> uh, somehow, Taylor Simink is uh, having a better punting outing than Ryan Quigley. Uh, he punted five times, averaging 44.4, while Ryan Quigley did two for 38. Uh, Taylor Simink also landed three of his five punts inside the 20. I, I still do think this is going to be Simink beating out Quigley, the rookie beating out the vet. Uh, but there's a lot more time to go, several more preseason games, and I'm not willing to bet on that a lot right now. Why the hell do we get rid of Jeff Locke? Oh, so Jeff. that we could sign the players that we just signed to. A Taylor Simink, that's why. Yeah. Uh, on the other hand, we've got Kai Forbath, who was perfect, one for one on his field goal, one for one on his extra point. Uh, Marshall Kane also went one for one on his extra point. Uh, so far, both kickers flawless. You got to kind of give the advantage to Kai Forbath there since he made his field goal. I'm assuming that next time, anytime there's a field goal, it's going to be Marshall Cohen out there doing his thing. Uh, I expect more back and forth like that throughout the preseason. I think Kai is ultimately going to win the job. Uh, because I was hoping he... the rookie would unseat him because of the leg strength, but I, I don't right now. I'm, I'm backtracking on that a bit because I, I, I see Kai as being more consistent. But Exactly. What has Kai done to lose the job? Nothing. And he hasn't done any. He hasn't done anything to lose the job. First man too. Cobra Kai for bath. That's what I call him. <laughs> this sounds like a GI Joe. What? Karate Kid, man. Cobra. Ah, uh, never mind. <laughs> I see. I haven't seen Karate Kid in a long time. Oh, okay. I thought you were. I didn't know you were going to say it for a long time. I just thought you were going to say I've never seen Karate Kid. I was going to say what? Podcast is over right now. We're starting a Karate Kid podcast. Let's get this done. So, so like Adam mentioned before, uh, week one of the preseason is in the books. Uh, we go to Seattle next week. So it's going to be tough. That's a very well-coached and very, very physical team all around. But uh, I'm looking forward to it. What day is that? Do you guys know off the top of your head? I don't, I don't need the date. What day is it? I, it is on the 18th. That would be next Friday. That'd be Friday night. Yep. Okay. Cool. So next Friday, uh, we're gonna try our best. I'm gonna be free. I'm gonna be taking leave, so I'll be free to do the podcast again right after that one. But it'll probably be close to about a half an hour to 45 minutes after the game is over again, like this one, if we're available. I, I think that's the plan. If, yep, I'll be here for that. And then for the 49ers game, it's just gonna be you guys because I will be at that game, and it airs on NBC, so that's gonna be extra fun. That's awesome, man. Cool. I'm really jealous. Week three preseason game. That's the one to go to, man. That's I'm starting to go fund me so we can get out there and we can. I can just get myself to that. I got front row balcony tickets for 22 bucks. Boom. Wow. That's I'll probably sneak down into the bottom, though, because I'm assuming it won't be sold out down there. That's pretty awesome, man. We're not wrapping up the show just yet. I just want to let you guys know that's who we play. That's the next time next week, just in case you guys were wondering. Um, we are going to talk about uh, – we'll let you guys talk about it. We did not post a social media question, to my knowledge, from two days ago because we knew we were planning this show. The social media question this coming week, and you'll have a lot of time to talk about it, which is your overall thoughts and feelings on the game this week. Um, I won't ever tell you what you can or cannot say or feel because we encourage everyone to comment, but don't be too alarmed. Like a ton of Vikings fans, like Kyle was talking about, mm -hmm. like two plays into the first uh, drive, people are like, this this team's awful. They suck. We're going to be terrible. And it's like, here we go again, Vikings fans being you know irrational so, so quickly. But we're going to see what you thought about that. Remember, if you comment, we'll give you a shout-out, and we'll talk about what you said. Um, oh, Adam, what's our update, just so everyone knows, on the Fantasy Football League? We were talking about that a little bit. Yeah, we chat. are still planning on yeah. doing the Survival League. As of right now, Yahoo is not allowing people to sign up for a, and create a, a Yahoo Survival League yet. As soon as that is possible, I'll get a league signed up. I'll shift the information over to Mr. West, and he'll make us a nice shiny graphic. And we will be all set, and we will have uh, some prizes of some sort. I don't know. I haven't even thought about prizes yet. All right, I'm going to make a command decision on the fly here. And if Adam wants to nix it, because him and Kyle are the leaders of the show, we'll nix it. But uh, I wanted to bring up something before I talk about my bold statement of the week. Um, you know, we have various platforms that we use here. iTunes, um, Stitcher, I think it is, Podomatic YouTube. Uh, Adam is nice enough to head up the Podomatic site, and it is pretty costly. 
And I will put that in there since we, as a as a threesome on here, will give you prizes for doing the Survival Fantasy League if you win or come in second place. Uh, that's all on us, and we do that voluntarily because we like it. We like interacting. Absolutely. But that's our way of thanking you guys for listening. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's one of the yep. few ways that we can kind of reach out and say, hey, look, man, we appreciate it because Vikings fans are the best. If you want to help us out, I'll put a link out there this weekend to help Adam and I cover the costs. Uh, me and Kyle talked about it. I get paid on Tuesday, so I'm definitely going to front him some money for helping us get us out there because he's keeping uh, an outlet for us open and made it for you guys. I don't use Podomatic, but for the people that do, I still want them to be able to use it. So. That's something uh, if the guys here are cool with, I definitely want to go forward and try to help Adam out with because we help out the fans. Well, Podomatic is a great source. Um, it's what I use to, di- to distribute the show up to iTunes and pretty much everywhere else. Yeah. Uh, and without it, I would be pretty lost, which is kind of poopy. <laughs> yeah, we just want to say thanks to Adam and uh, kind of help him out. If you want to, there's no pressure. Obviously, we're not going to make anyone do it. But no, no. It's- there, if you want to help Adam out. Shoot us a message, and uh, we'll put a post up there this weekend. But uh, I got a bold statement this week, and it's going to be pretty unpopular. But I, oh, I'm, I'm going on the side of uh, just superstition here because the last couple of years we've been undefeated in the preseason. And yes, one year we, we won the division, went to the playoffs, had a heartbreaker. Last year we did not. I think I think we need to lose a preseason game or two. I think we really do. Um, airing on the side of. Like tonight, man. I love it when the the rookies and the second and third stringers have a good good game. But I want I want to see the first team come out and dominate. And if we lose after the rest of the game, that's fine. I want to see kind of the reverse of what happened tonight. I, I do want our guys that are going to be the depth players or the special teamers to play well. I always want that. But I don't like this trend of every year we're undefeated in the preseason. Maybe we could take a couple of L's there and it'll transfer to wins come in the regular season. I don't know, man. I'm feeling a little superstitious about that, but that's something I noticed when I looked in uh, today because I said preseason records on Google just to see where we had been at since Mike Zimmer. Yeah, ever since being here, Zimmer's only lost one preseason game. Kind of weird, kind of cool, but just a little little superstition there. I haven't heard a bold statement in a while, so I just wanted to throw it. Well, out before there. we say farewell, I wanted to add too that I, I really love the strength of the defensive line for the Minnesota Vikings. Uh, there are so many talented players up and down the roster. Even after the first team went out and you had players coming in, uh, Jaleel Johnson, Stephen Weatherly, you know, the, these kind of guys that are just depth players on our team who might be challenging for starting jobs on other teams. It's, it's amazing at how talented some of these players are. And I don't care who wins some of these spots. Uh, even Will Sutton, who I thought was kind of doomed as soon as he signed his contract to, when he came here. He looked good. Uh, This this defensive line depth, I'm very, very encouraged by it. This is not a hot take or a hot take, as Mr. Tommy Gunn would say. I don't think this is a hot take, but I think this is uh, consensus across the board. Is the defensive line the best group we have on this team? Oh, absolutely. I I, I think overall on any side of the ball, that's our strength, and we have the most depth. The mo- and, good Lord. We've talked about it so many times because we talked about Tom Johnson. He'd be a starter somewhere else. Yep. Uh, easily because he was a backup. So, yeah, it's pretty amazing, man. I still love everything I'm seeing from Jaleel Johnson. Yeah. I, I think he's going to be a stud. I just had an epiphany. So, you guys know I'm a big Chris Stapleton fan. I'm wearing a shirt right now. He used to be in a bluegrass band called the Steel Drivers. He had a rock band with one album out that uh, actually you guys might like it as well because it's very, very bluesy. Um, the Johnson Brothers, J-O-M-P-S-O-N. Now we have the Johnson Brothers. On the- <laughs> My go. world is complete. By the way, the other day at work, um, everyone made fun of me, and we all started picking on each other at Snapchat, just doing things that little tendencies. Like I used to say, uh, I'll piggyback on that or something like that. I wouldn't pick on myself. And uh, one of the guys, I was going in hard on a couple of my guys specifically, and they came back and said, hi, my name's Kyle Smith, Chris Stapleton, Chris Stapleton, the Minnesota Vikings, <laughs> Chris Stapleton, the Vikings. I was like, yeah, yeah that's, that's pretty much it. So I got to tie in a Chris Stapleton reference. <laughs> I'm done for the week. All right, we got one last question from the chat here from Playtime, and it's a challenging one, so I hope you guys got your thinking cap on. Okay, go for Which it. player on the decline, or uh, oh, on the D-line will not make – the 53, I thought it said decline, and I was like, oh, man, a veteran that's gonna, not going to make the cut? That's going to be a tough question. <laughs> that's a but, good social media question. Can we use that? 
<laughs> but I guess it's dec- it w- which player on the D line. Uh, I, I think there are going to be several players that don't end up making the cut. And I really like some of these guys quite a bit. But, man, the competition is so tough. They're going to be quality players cut all over the place. And I bet several of them, if not many of them, are going to get some looks with other teams. Uh, let, and Or the Vikings are going to try to sign them back to the practice squad and they're going to get poached because it's, there's, it's just too talented of players. It's like when I was talking about trying to hide Stacy Coley on the practice squad. Now I don't even know if that's possible. I just had to, I'm looking up the, the unofficial depth chart from the other day. The first thing I read is Chunky Clements. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't see Chunky making the cut. Here's the interesting one since we're talking about the D-line. Sharif Floyd, is he going to be on this team or what? Well, we got a little while to find out since he's on the pup list, I believe. Or he, He's not on pup, is he? He's on uh, the non-football in, injury non-football, list. The NFI list, yeah. So I, I as of now, I'm not counting on him for this season at all. Yeah, I, I don't. How about you guys? Do you have a lot of hope that he's coming back? I mean, I hope that he comes back. I don't think he is. I we've heard nothing but doom and gloom about this this injury, uh, potentially nerve damage uh, that might be permanent. It it's been terrible. So I, that's going to be a shock because when that guy was on, he was as good as anybody. Uh, Jason wanted to know how Dayton Jones looked at the three technique, and the answer is good. I like him next to Jaleel Johnson, and I could see that as being a good second unit. And I, I like him as his, I like him there. I really do. It's kind of crazy too, seeing as how he's a first round pick. He used to play for a rival, but like we talked about the other day on the other show, it's kind of it's be kind of weird to see him tackle and not defensive end. I'm sure I'm sure that's not going to be what he plays the entire year. I'm sure he'll be switched in. Maybe he'd be a rotational per, part on the defensive end one or two plays, but. That's kind of crazy, man, but I'm glad he's finding a way. I'm glad we're using it. Uh, also, the question here about Bowers, whether or not we could hide him on the practice squad. And I, I don't know. This is another one of those Stephen Weatherly situations where New England wanted him, so the Vikings had to bring him up to their main roster. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, if Bowers or Coley or Adams winds up on the practice squad, they probably will get offers to go somewhere else. And while loyalty is something that, a lot of people put a lot of faith in money talks as well. So does opportunities and you can't fault these young guys for taking opportunities other places if they get the offer. Well, to be fair though, Paul Allen did talk a little bit indirectly about that where he said that the Vikings offered certain players like Bowers more money than what you would typically sign. And- right. Cause he was a priority on drafted free agent. Yes. So maybe the Rick Spielman is hoping that that would be enough to keep someone like him on the practice squad instead of signing with another team. But man, that's difficult. If you're a player and uh, even though the Vikings showed interest in you and they love you and they want to put you on the practice squad, if you get a call up from new England, how do you turn that down? I don't know. You know what I mean? I don't know how you do that. That's a, that's a tough decision to make. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's all I have for this week. Again, uh, next week, we're not going to do a show in between, I don't believe. I think our next show will be following the game against the Seattle Seahawks, week two of the preseason. Mm-hmm. It should be a really tough one. As everybody knows, Seattle has a really tough team, lots of quality players. But again, it's the second week of the preseason, so we're not going to see a- an extended amount of starters. We'll probably even see several guys sitting out. But it's still Vikings football. We're going to watch it and enjoy it. And I'm going to be putting out a lot of articles over on the Viking Age about uh, this game. If you haven't already checked it out, I've got several of the big highlighted plays up. I've got my review up of the things I liked and didn't like. And I didn't talk about a lot of the, my, the things I discussed in that article here. So it's probably going to be a little bit of a different experience if you go check that out. Because I even talk about that, uh, that blonde girl's dog in there. And everybody loved talking about that blonde girl's dog, especially Paul Allen. That was almost my game ball. <laughs> Your game ball almost went to the dog. It almost went to the dog. Yeah. Aww. <laughs> you never go wrong with dogs, man. Mm-hmm. The return of Blair Walsh. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's, we're heading into Blair Walsh territory over there. Yeah. What other Vikings are on the Seahawks? Anyone? Oh, I don't even. We. I was just gonna say that it's Vikings West. So I don't even know anymore, to be honest. 
It used to be. I don't know if it is so much no more. Here's a fun fact, and this is a pretty easy one for you guys because you're a lot smarter with this than I am. What's the last time we beat the Seahawks? Do you remember? Because I do. I don't remember. I don't know. 2009 with Brett Favre. Really? Sounds about right. The Vikings always have had a problem, no matter what the defense is. Even when, because uh, two years ago we won the division, uh, I remember Cordero Patterson going nuts because he scored the only touchdown in the game, and we all were like, "Please calm down. We're getting the shit kicked out of us." Oh yeah, I remember that. We're like, "Why we are you celebrating?" <laughs> uh, even the year the AP rushed for like 200 yards against them, we still lost. The last time I can remember, because the uniforms were really ugly, almost 10 years ago. Uh, yeah, so that's going to be a tough one, even though it's preseason. They've always been. We've that's always been a tough one for us. Uh, I do want to say that we are over 400 subscriptions over on YouTube right now. We're at 406, which means we got a few more subscriptions, which I appreciate that a lot. Uh, if you subscribe, awesome. I also want to recommend hitting the bell because sometimes we do uh, unscheduled shows and we end up just popping up every once in a while. If you hit that bell, you'll get a notification of every time we go online, and you can hop on in here and. Join in the chat, like so many of you guys did. Uh, we've we've got four thumbs up on the show already from people that just popped in. Wow, and I that's bet you, amazing. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks. And I just guys. hit it too, so we're up to five now. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> I want to give a shout out because Adam's doing that, and I want to give a shout out to two of my good friends. Uh, they're cousins. They're friends of mine back home. Uh, big Panther fans because they come from Charlotte. Uh, speaking of the notifications, my friend Shira, she's a really good friend of mine. She always did that when I told her about it last year, finally found out about the show, and would always like text while we were doing it, be like, man, this is cool, you're doing it live. So you'll get a notification, and it'll, it might send you an email as well, but it's just like, hey, the podcast is starting up now. So if you guys that are really faithful to it that you haven't done that, that's what will happen. And I want to give a shout-out to her uh, little cousin, uh, one of my good friends, Celia. She was actually the Panthers and Texans game last night. And uh, she got to be on the sideline, and she sent it from Snapchat. Got to the media pass, so she got to take pictures. Very so cool. I want. I want you guys to do that for a Minnesota game. Find your way. Sneak in there to one of those games and take some photos, Kyle West. Yeah, you're the photographer, man. Get some nice ones. Yeah, man. Do what I can. My <laughs> cell phone sucks. I can't get good pictures on there. I, uh, Adam, I accidentally, I didn't realize I took so many. My time in training camp, I took over 500 photos. Oh, I bet. You were yeah. going nuts. My phone died, so I didn't get nothing. Yeah, so I have a lot of stuff to be working through. I was too busy texting babes all day. <laughs> <laughs> Man, I wish that was the case. <laughs> all day chatting online with hot babes. That's right. Uh, but once again, I want to thank all you guys for joining us in the chat. It's real cool to see some new faces, friendly faces, familiar faces. And uh, to you, what's up? Tell them to come back next week. We do it every week. Come back. Tell your friends. Absolutely. And uh, head on over to our Facebook page over there. We'll be posting up our social media questions, some news, uh, just some fun tidbits about the Vikings. Uh, you can go on Twitter, interact with either at Purple People Pod, which is the show, or one of the hosts. So you can get that information in the details of the podcast down below of wherever you're listening because I put them in everything. And I also want to uh, ask you guys, if you're a fan of The Walking Dead, head on over to Undead Walking. Check out my work over there. I know that there's not a ton of crossover between The Vikings and The Walking Dead, but I'm a big fan of both, and I'd appreciate you guys checking out and helping out my other projects as well. Uh, you guys got anything else you want to plug before we go? Nope, that's it. Hit up that social media question we posted on the Facebook page. And give us your thoughts. I just wanted to say, look at how nice the new Timberwolves jerseys are. I don't know if you guys can see that on my camera. Yeah, there yeah. you go. Look how awesome those babies look. I got to get myself a Timberwolves jersey. That is Ooh, those do look pretty sharp. Yeah, I like Now that, that Jimmy Butler's there, you can go grab that. It'll be a hot one. You bet. That'd be what I grabbed. My dad told me I have to go to a Timberwolves game, and uh, a friend of mine told me I've got to go to uh, watch the Wild play the Blackhawks when they're in town, and I am a good football watcher. I can sit and observe. I can be relaxed. I can't watch hockey. I get too angry at the TV. I start <laughs> yelling. Every score is just so powerful, and it feels like, you know, even when you're down one nothing, it could be the end of the world. Yeah, I, I can't watch hockey for that reason. I can't. The blood pressure just goes too high. It, it, it's not some, good. I love some wild uh, hockey. That's that's a newer sport for me to get into, and it's just so much fun to watch on TV. I love it. I love all our Minnesota sports. I really do. 
for sure. And hey, it's fine to like other sports as well, and maybe even like another team. I mean, I, I understand there are a lot of fans out there that pick an AFC team or an, an NFC team, or they respect another team so much that they hope they have a good season or something like that. Uh, we are a classy team here at the Purple People Podcast. Uh, we 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 understand a lot of things, and hey, we're not here to tear other people down. We're here to build the Vikings up. That's what we're here to do. So once again, I'd like to thank everyone for coming. Uh, thank you to Kyle West and Kyle Smith for joining me here. And stay classy, Minnesota.